In this video, I want to try and help you avoid the mistakes that I made as a young guitar player so that you can become a sick player faster and maybe even become a massive name in guitar one day like I never did. If I could go way back and start learning guitar all over again, these are the things that I'd do differently. Let me give you a little bit of context. I've been playing guitar for almost 19 years now. I've studied popular music, been in a good few bands, and played acoustic guitar at a decent amount of house parties. <laughs> Basically, all the stuff you do as a young guitar player when you think you're gonna be a rock star. <laughs> not that that's not achievable, it's probably more achievable now than it's ever been. And when I first started playing guitar, I used to play a lot. Sometimes I'd practice right from when I got home from school all the way to going to bed. I bet that sounds familiar to some of you. It's just so easy to get wrapped up in guitar when you start playing. But throughout those 19 years, I've made a good few mistakes. Nowadays, I teach guitar to some amazing students, write my own music, and I've got this little YouTube channel. I wouldn't change where I am for the world, but with the experience I've got now, I'm sure I could have used my early years on guitar a little bit more wisely. So welcome back, dudes. It's great to see you. I'm Jack. Let's get into it. And if any of these points sound familiar, hit the like button to let me know. Going back to the beginning, I took to guitar quite quickly. Don't get me wrong, I was no child prodigy by any means, but it all seemed to fall into place with me. And it wasn't obvious at the time, but that became a problem. When anything I was learning didn't come easily to me like everything else, I'd get bored super quick. Basically my thought process was, if I can't play this, then I'm just not good enough and I'm gonna play something else. That fixed mindset meant that I was bouncing around all over the place playing loads of different things and never really focused. I was having fun and that's important, but the real fun comes from the challenge of playing and it took me years to realize that. Having the mindset to grow and stick at things and see the fun in challenge is what you need. But in fairness, I was exactly the same with video games as well. If anything got too difficult, I'd just take that out, put Tony Hawk's in and play that for the like six millionth time. But the point still stands. I always thought that people were just naturally good at things. Like like Slash or Paul Gilbert were two guitarists I really cared about and I thought they were like born to play but it's just not true. Paul Gilbert who's known for his like world beating alternate picking has said himself that that's one of the techniques that he found the absolute hardest to get the hang of. He absolutely struggled with alternate picking for years. And I tried it and I couldn't do it. It was like that, that is not working for, for me. And I really sort of gave up on the idea. In his own words, it did not come easily to him. But the amount of dedication and practice that he put into beating the challenge is what's made him a world famous guitarist. Finding the fun in challenge is what makes learning the guitar so rewarding. Becoming a better player than you were yesterday, one step at a time, and beating those challenging obstacles, that's what really strengthens your playing and your mind. Next time you come up against something that's super hard, see it as a challenge and you will beat it, I promise you, with enough effort and dedication. The payoff will be absolutely immense. As a side note, you'll probably know what I mean if you've played Elden Ring or any of the Souls games. Not that I'm any good at Elden Ring, I am absolute trash. My next regret really ties into the first. Because I was bouncing about so much between loads of different things, I never really spent the time learning a full song end to end. Basically, all I had in my arsenal for years was just a collection of riffs, a couple of solos and very few actual full songs. Jack, play as a song. I can't. I can play some riffs though. <laughs> this isn't the worst thing in the world. It gave me exposure to a load of different playing techniques and expanded my musical horizons, but it did build bad habits in my ability to focus and that did affect my practicing for a long time. If I could go back, I'd still collect riffs, absolutely, but I'd make sure I dedicated some time to learning full songs from artists that I love, like top to bottom. If you truly take the time to learn a full song that you think is awesome, there's absolutely nothing like the first time you really nail it. Your confidence as a player will skyrocket, but your ability to focus and play for longer will increase so much. It'll also give you a far better understanding of your favourite players and that'll impact the way that you play and sound on guitar. When you can play through a handful of your favourite songs without a break then you're absolutely nailing it and you'll improve massively. But I never had anyone to tell me otherwise and that leads me on to my next point. This is where my original teacher comes in, who we'll call Vincent for this video. <laughs> if I could go back knowing what to look for in a good guitar teacher then I wouldn't have chose mine. Vincent was a good guy, an older dude and friendly and full of loads of stories about idolising Jimi Hendrix when he was coming up and learning all his songs and like what we'd consider now all the classic years of guitar music but that was kind of the problem it was pretty old school and looking back I'm pretty sure he only taught for the money. I only took lessons with him for three years, but all we ever did was the same stuff that I did on my own. I'd go to his little studio and just learn parts of songs, but the only real benefit was the fact that I had someone there who could tell me how to play things better. We'd look over a song, 
He'd copy the tabs out onto tab paper and I'd just sit there practicing them until it was time to go home. My lessons never really taught me how to practice effectively. I was never shown how to use a metronome, muscle memory was never mentioned, and I was never given any exercises to really bring my technique up to speed. Vincent never really had a plan for me or my playing, and it took me absolutely years to learn how the best guys practice. If I'd have found a teacher who really cared about the progression of his students and had a plan for him, then I'm almost certain that I wouldn't have struggled with the long ruts that I did as a young player. Don't get me wrong, having a guitar teacher is one of the absolute best things you can do for your progression. As long as they care about your playing then they can guide you to being a sharper guitarist in ways that it would take most people years to do on their own. You can do it on your own with the right resources but actually having someone to show you is invaluable. Finally the last one's a massive one and it's about deliberate practice. Deliberately practicing is taking one aspect of your playing that you really want to improve and practicing that with absolute complete focus to make the most out of your practice time. Let's face it, we've all sat down to practice and just jumped straight into the stuff we already know. I'm guilty of it too, but if we're honest with ourselves, if you can play it already, you're not really practicing. And that's exactly what I used to do. I'd play songs that I could already play or learn things that I knew I could play. Like I said before, I was never shown how to practice properly by my teacher, so that meant I was only picking up new techniques every now and again. And that slowed my progress massively. In all those hours I think playing the stuff that I already knew, I could have taken a legato exercise or a picking exercise and really focused and worked on it. Even if I just took 15 minutes a day out of that time that I was practicing, I could have made some huge improvements. It would have built my muscle memory, my speed, my accuracy, but instead I absolutely dread to think how many hours I spent playing the opening riffs to Killswitch Engage songs. If you're interested in a full video on deliberate practice and how to implement it into your practice time, let me know. I firmly believe that this is the absolute best way to see improvements in your playing for sure. So if I could go back to the beginning knowing what I know now, those are the things I'd do differently. I wonder how many of them sound familiar to you. <laughs> Over the years I've had the chance to fix all these things and I've seen my own ability increase tons. At the end of it all the main thing is that you have fun with guitar and I did and still do. I've always loved it and that'll never change but I can't say that it doesn't feel better to be practicing better now. I don't regret all the time that I spent just playing the guitar but I definitely could have used it better. It's worth bearing in mind that like everything worth doing, playing guitar can be challenging at times. It's good to have a guiding voice there to help you find your way. With that, I hope my stories help you even just a little bit in becoming the guitar player that you're truly capable of being. If you're having trouble or you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me in the comments and I'll always do my best to make some time to try and help you out. Do you have any guitar regrets that you want to share? You can leave them in the comments as well. It'd be cool to get a discussion going and see if we can help a few people with their playing. In the meantime, if you got this far, Thank you so much for watching, it really does mean the world to me. Take care mate, stay safe, I'll see you later.